Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. If I continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter, by now you should have known and heard and understood something is about to happen in the United States. So the question I have today is cross boundaries. The way Christianity needing heavy duty repentance. So the cross boundaries is between the way and Christianity. Do they need heavy duty repentance? Being an enabler for President Kennedy, that would be awesome. But being an enabler for President Trump, who has lost and doesn't want to concede, that is sad. But what I really am concerned about it's those that keep on prophesying, thus says the Lord. If God does not speak, please shut up, because have some more respect, because we should know and understand by now what is right and what is wrong. Folks, this is going to be a serious session. Remember, tough times never last, but tough people, they do. Yes, it is true. We are dealing with oxymorons, Christian oxymoron exposed, restorative justice, PMS, which stands for the physical side, the mental side, and the spiritual side, the way God intended us, versus PMS from Satan, which is using politics, money, and spirituality or religion in order to get the people to where they don't want to be. Sometimes a mere thank you does not cover it. And the Lord called unto Moses out of the mountain, saying, Come unto me, for I would give thee the law for thy people, which shall be a covenant for the children of light. Folks, God gave Moses a law for the children of light. And Moses went up unto God, and God spoke all these words saying the Ten Commandments. When Moses heard the voice of God, God sealed within him the covenant between the Lord and the children of light. So what do boundaries mean? Boundaries divide one entity or political unit from another. Limit about a country or a city or state or territory or the like. Most often designates a line on a map and borders show in red. So we have an indication those are the lines, the demarcations. These are the conditions and the explanations in the dictionary or a phrase book. Often reading more in depth into the sentence will open an insight that can help understand and break the frustration scenario. When we stay in the biblical language, and it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf, and the dancing, and the wickedness of the people, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tablets out of his hands, and brake them beneath the mount. And Moses said unto the people, And ye have sinned, great sin, ye have denied the Creator, I will go up unto the Lord and plead atonement for thy sin. You know, when Moses returned to God and said, Lord, and Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, thou hast seen the desecration of thy holy law. For the children lost faith and worshipped the darkness and made for themselves a golden calf. Lord, forgive them, for they are blind to the light. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, at the beginning of time was a covenant made begin between God and man. And the holy flame of the Creator did enter into him. And he made the Son of God, and he gave him to guard his inheritance of the firstborn, and make the land of his father fruitful, and keep it holy. And he who casteth out the Creator from him, though spit of his birthright, and no more grief and sin does exist in the eyes of God. To say it very plain and very simple, God said only the children of light can keep the commandments of the law. 
If for I say this, the tablets which you broke shall not be rewritten in the words of men, since you return them to the earth and fire, so shall they live invisible in the hearts of those who can follow their law. And to the people of little faith, who did sin against the Creator, even while they stood on holy ground before their God, I will give you another law. I shall be in, it shall be in stem law. Yes, it will bind them, for they know not yet the kingdom of light. And Moses hid the invincible law. That invisible law was in his heart and kept it for a sign to the children of light. And God gave unto Moses the written law for the people. And he went down unto them and spoke unto them with a heavy heart. For those that appreciate straight talk. When we go to straight talk, we screwed up right in front of God Almighty, like Adam and Eve. When I say we, I mean the body of Christ, Christianity, and all of humanity. Whatever we call ourselves to believe. I know some people say, well, I'm a Hindi, I'm a Hindu, I'm a Muslim, I'm this and I'm that. I have great respect for everyone that believes. But giving yourself a different title does not help if you violate the spirit of the agreement. Remember that we are standing before a judge, which implies that you understand the meaning of the discussions in front of a judge. Hiding behind the man of God who knows a little bit more than you is not going to help you. For it is me and my house that shall serve the Lord. Folks, this is serious stuff. We are bound by what we declare or will state in front of the judge. I take as an example the elections of the United States of America. More than expected, about 30,000 congregations shut the doors in the United States from 2006 to 2012. A recent study finds good news for churches overall, including the lowest closure rate of any American institution. The National Congregation Study, NCS, conducted in 2006 and 2012, estimated the number of congregations in the U.S. increased from 336,000 in 1998 to a peak of 414,000 in 2006, but then leveled off at 384,000 in 2012. Meanwhile, non-denominational non churches grew from 54,000 in 1998 to 79,000 in 2006 to 84,000 in 2012. It echoes a 2010 report from the Hartford Institute for Religious Research, which found that non-denominational churches have the third largest cluster of adherents in the United States, following Catholics and Southern Baptists. They found that individuals claiming non-denominational affiliations grew from 194,000 in 1990 to 8 million in 2008. To put the numbers in perspective, we are, are we the ticklish church that God spoke about? Going to church and going and doing the beautiful things you believe are necessary to move God is admirable. But wrongly submitting to God Almighty has shown little or no results. Why am I so pessimistic? You see that I wear at the moment a winter coat. It's getting colder here in the Netherlands. But this is a coat I bought in Canada because when it gets minus 25, minus 30, and sometimes minus 50 Celsius, folks, yes, it can be pretty cold. So I feel it is getting colder spiritually as well. Dealing with the law, there are a couple of things you need to know and you got to think about. There is a small room to maneuver. If the law states you cannot do this or that and you agree to abide by those, or you at least acknowledge that you should know them, it makes you liable. For instance, when we moved to Canada in 1981, that was shortly after our boy had passed away and we wanted to start a new beginning. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms was just released in 1982. It's a bill that's 
constitutes what you can and cannot do and protects and guarantees certain political rights to Canadian citizens and everyone's civil right in Canada from the policies and actions of all areas and levels of the government. It unifies Canadians around a set of principles that everybody has those rights and that embodies those rights. So we got in 1981, we arrived and we got our Canadian residency. This permit not only allowed me to move to Canada and get and set up business as scheduled, but it also obligated me to abide by the rules. Though I believed obviously that conducting yourself, minding your own business, hiring and setting up a shop was all entailed in that understanding. In the process, I hired over the years between 1981 to 2001, that is over 20 years spent for the enterprises I was involved in, over hundreds of people. And some of those people made some darn good money. Many made over $100,000 a year plus. And so I know we had a pretty heavy payroll. So some earned a lot of money, some earned a lot less. Yet in the courts, when I was in court from 1997 to 2012, which is 15 years of excruciating turning over every single document, the Attorney General could find, they wanted to nail me. The case got thrown out several times in London, Ontario. The Attorney General's office moved the case to Hamilton, Ontario, a different district in 2003, with a new facade. A co-accused was found who was sued himself for $200 million by another party in the United States. And they made a deal with whom, because I was never party to the deal, but eventually it came out. He got only two years versus my six years times three, that he had made a deal that by accusing us, he told the Crown that all his money was invested. So he got sued for $200 million. He says to the Crown, he owned... He invested all his money with me, which was less than a million dollars, of which he had gotten a return to about 35% got sent back to him upon his request. But the Crown just said he had invested all his money with us. So that was the deal. The co accused had made a deal. I was not aware of that. There was just a slight little problem. We never saw the client's capital since the company he deposited was like any other client. We had an agreement. He said the money was unencumbered. So to our understanding, that money was in a joint venture agreement, tied up in an agreement, properly signed and pro executed. The problem, as self-representative, now I'm going back, standing before the judge, we had signed agreements. Non-disclosure agreements was all our clients, yet, this particular agreement showed up and he was representing a whole bunch of people of which I was held responsible. Okay, the problem was that I had spent over $10 million on lawyers who prepared our paperwork, our defense in court, and after running C, where the investment acknowledged before the court, whereby the investment, in other words, they called up the people that we invested with, they knew the money was invested with another group of people that worked on Wall Street, I was still held responsible for the failure of the contract. And then on top of it, people that were re uh, responsible in my corporation, the accountant, and uh, this was a charter accountant, as well as a real estate person that had taken a couple of hundred thousand dollars out of the company unbeknownst to me, I was liable because I was the head of that company. So the solution, understanding your opponent, that is one part. The problem I failed to understand was the spiritual aspect. We prayed and we believed that God would provide as he always does. What I mean with praying, we pray together with the people that we invested the money with. Sounds weird? For some of you will understand that when you start an enterprise the way I was brought up, you commit this to the Lord. You pray together over it. So I had a hard time suing the people that I was praying with because they did not deliver. Although they said it was coming, it was on its way, it was on its way. This would have been 
a very significant amount of dollars that would have offset all my problems. So we had a problem. I run out of lawyers. I'm defending myself before an attorney general's office that was persistent, that would go, they couldn't care less. So I lost a very significant issue. But on appeal in Osgood Hall, it didn't make sense. We got sentenced, both my wife and I, yet winning on appeal again. So we appealed this. The inmate commission and the attorney general's office said we had no chance. It was still an eye opener because there is an understanding. Writing the books, deception protocol, the prodigal sum and the restorative justice simplified did something. Many before me must have experienced this as well. I mean, people that start putting it in writing. I forced myself to write down what happened and understand the forces I was dealing with unbeknownst to me. Coming to an understanding of the details behind the players and discovering that shortly after, two days after my deportation, the co-accused died unexpectedly opened my eyes. See, he kept his facade up and he was the burn, the innocent bystander and I was the one that had screwed him. But reality was different. I get deported and he unexpected dies. Young man, it's not up to me to judge him. I don't know what it is, but it's me in my house that I must put in order. No matter what I believe, people working for me were my responsibility, whether they stole money or not. It was my responsibility for the investment group that failed to release funds to our company. I should have sued them according to judge. And as a Christian, I believe I could not do that. And I became the criminal and my new title, ex-convict. So I learned something out of this and that is why I'm sharing this. Not to say, oh bad, look at how poor they treated me. My responsibility, responsibility number one, when humanity has the final day in front of God Almighty's judgment, we will each get to deal with our own decisions. Following your pastor is great till you're held responsible for your inactions. Do you hear what I'm saying, folks? You are held liable. So the responsibility according to charter rights was very great. But it was also my savior because the first case we won based on the charter right. I knew of it, but I didn't study it before till I needed it and it became necessary for me to have a better understanding. With the primary appeal, I got blocked from every side to see another judge hearing our case. In other words, inside, when I was serving time and maximum, I got approved an appeal because you get treated differently. But when I was a minimum, they blocked me any way, form and shape. I was not allowed to see another judge. This the case that I believe we could win. But my wife and I were both serving time. C was in a women's pr uh, prison. C got a group of women with the same predicament and they got an, a lawyer paid for by the government, which they refused to give me with the men because I had about 20 guys, 25 people. My wife had about 10 people and they succeeded in the appeal. Because my wife and I had the same case when C won, I won. That is part number one. Always respect your wife. Always respect your partner. Responsibility number two. On the Canadian law, respondents stated that I served my time and earned my release as conditions stipulated in court. Though God's rule states something else. As a man that follows the way, I must follow the instructions of God as stated in the kingdom of light. It shall be a stem law, yeah. It shall bind them, for they know not yet the kingdom of light. And Moses hid the invisible law within his breast in his chest and kept it for a sign to the children of light. In Romans 13 verse 8, in the complete Jewish Bible it states, Do not owe anybody anything except to love one another, for whoever loves his fellow human has fulfilled Torah. 
When did Yeshua say that the Pharisees belonged to the synagogue of Satan? And why did he say that? And he who cast out the Creator from him does spit upon his birthright, and no more grievous sin, there's no worse sin than in the eyes of God. If we spit on our inheritance, our heavenly birthright, we spit in God's face. And to repent, we need to follow the instructions of God as stated for the kingdom of light. Yet we fail even to deal with the simple Ten Commandments. Yes, folks, when Moses was so upset with the Jewish people, he threw the Ten Commandments that he had received from God. And God said, I will get you some other Ten Commandments, but those are not for the children of light. We are not the children of light. We cannot even make a simple decision to follow the way, the truth, and the light. We are following Christianity. We are following the road that Satan put up when he, in 325, combined the Emperor of Rome's edict, law, his degree, and it became the Roman Catholic Church. That has nothing to do with the children of light. It sounds great, but it is not the law that God stated. So we need to wake up to the oxymoron of the light and the Ten Commandments. Cross boundaries between the way and Christianity or the body of Christ need some heavy duty repentance. Like I was not aware of the responsibilities I undertook by signing legal agreements with my clients. The awareness I had was what I read, the agreement that we had, and yet it could be interpreted in a different way. Those agreements carried a more significant burden than I ever understood. When the judge handed down the sentence of six years times three, I understand my misinterpretation. It does not matter how well you intended to do the right thing. If you are wrong, you are wrong no matter what. Folks, I share this in love with you. For most of my life, I worked as a believer of the body of Christ. I understood what I learned at Sunday school, Bible school, seminary, Bible courses, practical Bible school as an evangelist. It all went down because I loved to read about it. When I shared it as an evangelist, preaching the gospel for many years, over 12 years traveling around the world, yet during the trial, and the time spent in jail as a prisoner myself, slowly but indiscriminable issues became indescribable issues became apparent. I hope you do not undergo a similar situation. While I served time, several people got shanked with homemade weapons in their own cell, and several other people died, sometimes an inexplicable. To die people of little faith, would it sin against the Creator? To the people with little faith, even while you stood on holy ground before your God, He gave us another law. The law is the Ten Commandments, and most of us know them, and we fail it daily, looking around and watching television. We miss the point. We don't seem to get the drift. Friends, this is not a judgment. I do not judge you. This is a warning that the body of Christ is in some serious need. Christianity needs heavy duty repentance. And if you fail, I'm not sure how much more time is left. For example, President Trump, with the backing of the body of Christ. Now, we found out and I discussed that, that there are over 200 million Christians approximately in the United States. At least 71 million people and we don't know the breakdown of Christianity, voted for Trump. Now, Mr. Trump, in all normal conditions, he's a liar, he's a cheat, he's a scumbag, and he's the president of the United States. And someone enabled him to do that. And I personally hold the body of Christ as the enablers. And why? Paula White, Pat Robertson, John Hagee, Kenneth Copeland, Sid Roth, and many, many others keep on prophesying, thus says the Lord. And for an 
child of God, when God speaks, you respect what they are saying. But have you ever wondered why God is lying to the body of Christ? Or if God is not lying to the body of Christ, then that means that your leaders are lying because they're saying things that are not right. Why are they supposed uh, supporting a narcissist, a guy that's so full of himself, the leadership on the Paula White, Pat Robertson, John Hagee? <laughs> Folks, it's like you are already living in a self-imposed prison. The one you made for yourself and your loved ones. Today is November the 30th as I'm making this video. Is it too late to change? No. But I sure can guarantee there is not much more time left for the Lord. Clarify there is a time for everything. Why wait till it is too late? And I called out the people already and I don't do it because I enjoy it. I respected many of them. For many years, I believe what they shared, but I have to call you out. As vocal porn since you made your predictions, and thus says the Lord announcements, they call attention. You folks were wrong. Could you do everyone a favor and come off your high horses? I'm sorry to have to speak through this media to you, yet it's not clear that a maniac who acts like a maniac talks like a maniac, he is a maniac. Today is the time to repent and step back and count your predictions. Yes, your predicament. If someone claims that the Lord spoke and it does not come through, then the Lord did not speak. And the person who conveyed the message as God, as coming from God, is called a liar. I don't call you a liar. The word said, if I did not speak that word, then liars won't enter the kingdom of God. But if there is a have kingdom of heaven, and if there is a kingdom of darkness, before you make a complete fool out of yourself, please check the word of God. For a maniac is a maniac or a sociopath. I don't care who you support, folks. It's not my business because I do not live in the United States. But if it is affecting me, and my simple pension that I receive, because you keep on doing things that affects the whole world, then I have to warn you, be very careful, because like my coat here is a winter coat, it's gonna be tough. And tough times never last, but tough people do. I hope that this will wake you up. Check it out, folks. If I'm wrong, I will take the blame, but I know pretty well God made a law for the children of light. That's why he said, I want you to follow the way, the truth, and the light. But if you want to do the simple Ten Commandments and screw those up, bless your heart. Tough times never last. Tough people, they will do. Bye for now.
knocking at your door I know one thing for sure I've never been so close before
mistake we love, we thought it was always on fire. Our house, our dream. We were dancing on wire, red clays, it seemed.